By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at an X Points final. So this is one of their monthly finals. This is number 37 already. And most of those other 36 finals we have here on the channel. So if you want to see a lot of X Points finals, click on the playlist that's appearing right now. But before you do that though, stick around, maybe maybe open the playlist, keep this one open as well and first finish finals 37 because this promises to be a really good one. We have Ishan who's on mono black. It is a really cool deck. It's got Jews and Jins. I love it. And he's playing against Joel, Joel. And do I say Joel or Joel? I'm just going to say Joel. And he is playing with a deck that I've called The Roof is on Fire. It is Bird. It's got white, blue, and a lot of red Burn. <laughs> and Atox as well with Vices and stuff. It's, it's a very strong deck. And I guess both decks are quite strong. That is, of course, why they've made it all the way to the final. So I think we're in for like a very exciting match. Like these two decks... Are, are very like they seem very competitive this seems like a really nice matchup and i'll explain why in the deck deck section but before i do though first a quick look at the x points point list because of course the x points works according to a 10 point system so here you see the list that means you can only spend 10 points on cards with points allocated to them for example if i choose to play uh my ancestral recall and i want to also play my demonic tutor and my um uh, my, my soul ring i can't because then i have 11 points and i can only spend 10 so it's quite an interesting puzzle every time to see okay what works what doesn't work so both of these decks of course don't have more than 10 points of the allocated cards in them and besides that we also have the main uh, uh play set or sorry the main rule set and that of course is atlantic so 93 94 rules means uh, Atlantic means with Fallen Empires and also with Mana Burn. Okay, so this, just that that is clear. So Mana Burn counts in this matchup. Now, before I start with the deck deck, uh, deck decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip this section, go to the uh, matches first, check out the deck decks later. I know some people prefer to do it that way. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games, so just click on there. It'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description, there's also a link to my Patreon page. So if you want to support me uh, making this content for you, keep making old school magic content on YouTube, please consider becoming a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the information about the Timmy Talks patron program. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Joel. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Joel, and I've called it The Roof is on Fire, named after, of course, that famous hit by the Bloodhound Gang. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. We don't need no... Right? And you probably know the rest. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it here on YouTube. We're, we're a family-friendly channel, right? I think at least. Um, I actually know that a lot of families watch my videos too. It's always uh, heartwarming, you know, to hear that, to get like an email and say, hey man, we watch your show with the whole family. We enjoy the episode, so... Thank you guys for doing that. Um, anyway, back to the deck of Joel. So it's called The Roof is on Fire. And yeah, just because there's a lot of fire in here, we've got four lightning bolts, four chain lightnings, and four psionic blasts. And that's just to burn, right? So on burn alone, he can deal 24 plus 16. And that is 40 points of damage on burn alone. And on top of that, he's playing Black Vice in combination with Ankh of Mishra and also with Copper Tablet. So basically, almost everything in this deck hurts. Right, and what I like is this is quite old school. This Black Vice Ankh of Mishra, uh, Black Vice, of course, a card that punishes you for having more cards in your hand than four. So, for each card above four, you take a damage. If you have seven cards in hand, you take three points of damage. And then, Ankh of Mishra is a card that says whoever plays out a land takes two damage. So, the problem, of course, is when your opponent has a vice, you want to play out your lands. But, I mean, you don't because there's an Ankh of Mishra and then you're going to take even more damage. So it's kind of a catch-22. You don't really know what direction to go. Now, on top of all this direct damage and all these hurtful artifacts, he's also playing with Savannah Lions. Of course, the best vanilla creature in the format. Um, you see it the most uh, of all vanilla creatures. One white for a 2-1 attacker. So that uh, creates some early pressure. And then, of course, you have your Atok in the two slot. One red and one Atok is a very interesting creature from Antiquities. A 1-2 and uh, you can sack an artifact to give the plus two, plus two until end of turn. And I mean, I love how that works together with, for example, a card like Black Vice, because Black Vice 
Usually later in the game, it's not as strong anymore. Not always though, but usually. And then you can still feed it to the ATOC and get like that plus two, plus two boost. Have like a little mini giant growth. I mean, and that's that's what I like when you're playing with ATOC. The same if when you combine ATOC, for example, with the Winter Orb. You know, it's 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 so nice if if it doesn't help later on in the match for whatever reason, or if it's working against you, you just gobble up the artifact with your ATOC and it gets a nice power boost. And then he's also playing, of course, with you know, one of the best creatures in the format. I guess Atok is one of the best creatures too, you could argue. Um, he's playing with Surrendip Afrit, a 3-4 flyer. This is the revised edition, so that's why you have that uh, misprint with the art. And uh, it's a 3-4 it's a and it, uh, it flies, like I said. It's from Arabian Nights originally and deals one damage to you during your upkeep. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about this deck other than that it's looking brutal. I mean, this is a deck you can die very quickly. We could be in for very short games if I look at this list. And... I guess his opponent, Ishan, is playing with Mono Black, so that could be a quick deck as well. Talking about that, let's take a look at the list of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Ishan. So this is your Mono Black list, right? And I love to see Juzam Jins. I'm just, I'm a sucker for Juzams. They're just so cool. So in case you don't know, you probably know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Two Black and Two to cast for this 5-5 five, five Beauty. Also deals one damage to you, just like the Surrender Perfeet in Joel's deck. Uh, but it's, it, have I mentioned it's a 5-5 five five yet? So this could be really brutal. If you can get this down early, you know, you only need four swings with this and your opponent is dead. Um, and then, of course, he's playing with the Pump Knights and then with four Hypnotic Specters and four Sengir Vampires. So just a lot of creatures, actually, 16 creatures. And then he can also deal damage with the Underworld Dreams, playing with four Underworld Dreams and also with three Drain Lives. So I think those Drain Lives can also be quite good, especially in this matchup, because remember, his opponent Joel is playing with a lot of burn. And then if you have a little bit of life gain in your deck, and a little bit, actually he's got three, so that's quite a lot. That's really good. Also, um, I love Drain Life in combination with your Dark Ritual, because one of the problems with Dark Ritual is, don't get me wrong, it's a great card, one black interrupt gives you three black back, is that when you have it later in the game, it's just not always that good. It could be a little bit lackluster, like when you're, you know, when you're top decking a Black Lotus and, and you're really in need of like a big creature or an answer to a creature. And the same goes kind of for Dark Ritual. But if you have your Drain Life, you can combine Drain Life with Dark Ritual. That can be that tipping point that those extra two points of damage can just be the amount of damage you need to, you know, to tip the match. And actually, it has happened to me very recently that I was winning with my blue control deck. I had control or thought so. And then I had no counter magic left. And he played a drain life powered by some dark rituals. And, and he won out of nowhere. Like I was I was definitely winning the game. But hey, that's that's the fun about magic, of course, that sometimes out of nowhere you can still get back into it. And I think these drain lives can be very, very good at this matchup. I also like the one in, the inclusion of the one greed. I think greed is a card. You don't see that often anymore, but I, I think it's good, and I'm happy to see it here in the finals. It's a one black and three, I believe, and it's an enchantment. And for one black, uh, you can draw a card, but you do have to pay two life, and you can do that as often as you want. You don't have to tap the greed. Of course, it's an enchantment. You don't really tap enchantments, but just to, to explain, so you can use it multiple times. And of course, that can work together quite well with the drain life as well. Play a huge drain life, get some life cash in those lives for more cards, for perhaps creatures to put some pressure on. I also really like the um, one of Nevenero's disc. I think it's quite good. Obviously, a Demonic Tutor would have been very useful here, but remember, we have that point system, and a Demonic Tutor is costing quite a lot of points, so that's probably the reason why he chose not to play with it, but he did choose to, for example, play with four Mishra's Factories, and I think Factories in this deck are also quite important, by the way, because remember, uh, in, in X points, there are a lot of mono white decks that have a lot of pro white cards, uh, sorry, pro black cards, and then, of course, you need some artifacts to kind of block those creatures, so a lot of players play Suchi in the sideboard. We don't see that here, but we do see the four Mishra's Factories, and of course, he can also answer those threats with his Nevenerals Discs, playing one main, like I said, but also two in the side. So yeah, I mean, looking at this, I'm thinking like, okay, this can be an interesting match. On the one hand, we've got the super fast burn, right? And we, we see no burn in a mono black deck, but we do see those drain lives, and also the mono black deck can go very, very quick. Um, I'm also liking those Underworld Dreams. They can get really annoying for your opponent. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just going to say 50-50. I love the Guardian Beast, by the way, in that sideboard. I wonder if he's going to board that in. If you can get a Guardian Beast Chaos Orb going, that would be quite brutal and cool to see in the finals. But, hey, I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Let's go to the finals of X-Points 37, Joel versus Ishan. Here we go. Game a number one. Here we go. Ishan on the bottom, the mono black player on the play here, starting with the Swamp taking on Joel, and Joel is playing a white-blue-red deck, 
and it's full of burn. I've called it uh, the roof is on fire. And he's playing with uh, four chains, also four black vice. So playing a vice here. So just a lot of burn on here. He's playing vice, Ang of Mishra, four chain lightning, four lightning bolts, four Sianu blasts, <laughs> Atox. So. And now, of course, the uh, first points of damage here for Ishan dropping to 18. So I guess it's good that he's on the play, you know, then uh, the vice doesn't hurt as much. But look at this black lotus hitting the board. I wonder if he's going to use the lotus here to, for example, play a Juzam Jin. He's playing with uh, four Juzams in his deck. 5-5 five, five powerhouse from the Arabian Nights. Look at that sack in the lotus. Playing Underworld Dreams and tapping two black for an order of the Ebon Hand. So the 2-1 Pump Knight with protection from white. And that protection from white is not very relevant. I mean, Joel does play with four Savannah lines, but that is, I believe, the only white in his deck. So, um, or at least the white creatures in his deck. I don't believe he plays with, uh, for example, a Swords to Plowshares. But anyway, he's playing a Plateau here. I wonder if he's going to play a Bolt on the order of course he's taken a damage as well by the way from the underworld dreams a uh, enchantment from legends three black to cast and every time your opponent draws a card he or she takes a point of damage so it's very very good no damage here for ishan and i mean he's thinking about attacking could attack but then of course joel could consider animating his factory and the factory can pump itself then he could trade for the order First, we see another black mana being played out here, a black land, I should say. There's the attack for the 2-1. Well, now we can give it plus 1, plus 0, oh, and first strike. So probably Joel is not going to want to trade here. So I assume he's just going to take the damage. He would drop to 16. Well, drop to 17 if he pumps it up to 16. And Joel kind of in the tank already. So taking the damage, second main, an Hypnotic Spectre. So just a lot of pressure here. I do expect a Bolt. And what I really like here is that Ishan first attacks, kind of tries to lure out that Bolt if Joel has one. And after that plays out his Hypnotic Spectre. And Joel, of course, being very patient or simply doesn't have the Bolt. Maybe he's got a Chain in hand. He's going to tap four, perhaps a Psionic Blast. Noah Surrender Pafrit. That's actually kind of, kind of good for Joel. Because that can block. The problem, of course, it, it is dealing damage. It's way better as an attacking creature than as a defender. And remember, Joel also takes one damage a turn from that uh, Underworld Dream. So he's on 16 at the moment. And Ishan drawing a card for turn. I guess for Ishan, the best draw here would simply be a Terror. You play a Terror on the Surrendip, then attack for four. You can even pump it for five. And then uh, Joel would also lose a card. And I guess Joel is... Maybe a little bit unlucky that he just doesn't have a bolt in hand, or maybe he wants to keep the bolt and play it uh, on the face of Ishan later in the game. There's a Mishra's factory here, so four mana to his uh, disposal. I'm really hoping to see some Juzams this turn, uh, this game. Anyway, tapping three, there's an Hypnotic Spectre, another one hitting the board, so. Passing the turn, so the Surrendip is doing work. So here he takes the damage from the Surrendip and of course the damage from drawing as well. So he should go to 14, exactly. And you can see the life totals there in the corner, by the way, of the screen. So the amount of cards in hand, I guess, and also the life totals. So 14 for Joel and 18 here for Ishan. There's a plateau here uh, being played out by Joel. And I mean, this is tough because if you're Joel, of course, you don't want to attack with the Surrendip because you need to protect your hand. But if you, if you keep it the same way, you're just slowly going to die because you do take two damage a turn, which is quite a lot, actually. There's just a pass, though. It's going to draw another card. And I guess if you're Ishan, you're kind of fine by this. Two cards in hand. There's not really a good attack for him. It would be nice for, for Ishan if he could draw some more black mana. Then at a certain point, you could maybe pump the Order of the Ebon Hand to a 4-1 and give it first strike. But then he still needs two more swamps if he wants to do that. So two cards in hand at the moment. Looking at the board, I guess, considering an attack. But in all honesty, I think it's better to just not attack and keep the board as is. I mean, it is tempting. You could consider if you attack with everything... You know, and of course, you want to keep your black mana, all three of them, because then if he blocks with the, uh, with the factory, you can still kill the factory. But then Joel would probably block one of the hippies. 
That means maybe he would take four points of damage and lose a card, and you would lose Hypnotic Spectre. It's not so bad, actually. Look at that. He is going to attack with everything. While I was talking about it, I was like, well, it's actually not that bad. And I think it's good here from Ishan to really take his time to kind of think, okay, what are my options? What's the best uh, solution here? And of course, the worst scenario here for Ishan would be if Joel can block one of the hippies and if he has a bolt for the other hippie. But I don't think he does or else he would have played it a while ago. Ooh, look at that tapping three. Yeah, there is a psionic blast. Yeah, this is kind of a bad scenario for Ishan, but at least Joel is taking some damage though. So let's see what he does. So I assume the four damage is going to go to one of the hippies, going to block the other hippie. Exactly. They're both going to die. Going to take two damage from the order of the Evan Hand. Is he going to pump it? No, he's not. He's going to go to 12. Then second main, there's another Order of the Ebon Hand. So another Pump Knight hitting the board. So, I mean, yes, this didn't, this didn't go great for Ishan. However, look at the life total of Joel. He's now dropping to 8, I believe. Yeah, it's, it definitely needs 4 more turns. He needs to get rid of that uh, Underworld Dreams. And Joel is still not in a position where he can just attack with the Surrender because he needs it as a blocker against those two orders of the Ebon Hand. So he's still kind of like a cat in a corner, has to find a way out of this. Remember, it's just the first game though of the finals here. We're gonna do a best of three, finals 37 of the X points, a monthly tournament that you can join for free, by the way. So if you enjoy X points, check out the description below. There's a link to their Facebook group you can join for free. And I dive right in. Joel, of course, in the tank here. And he knows he's in a pretty bad position here. That's the thing with these surrenders. Yes, they're great, but as soon as your opponent has a way to kind of nullify your surrender and keep it alive, and then, of course, in combination with the Underworld. Look at this. He is attacking for three. So he's going to go to 15. I guess that means that Joel's going to at least play another blocker. Ooh, look at that, though. Another surrender per free. That is not ideal. I mean, that means Joel is going to take three points of damage next turn, drop to five. That is bad. But good for Ishan, of course. If you're Ishan, you're probably pretty happy with this. He's on 15, so... I mean, he's also looking at six damage. Potentially, next turn, he would drop to nine. So, it's going to be a close call here. Two cards in hand. Going to tap four. What are we going to see? Juice Amgen. I'm liking this. I'm liking this play. I think next turn you could consider going all in again. Juice in both orders. Whatever, you know, just swing in. But first, let's see what uh, Joel can do. Taking uh, three points of damage here, if I'm not mistaken. One from the Dreams, two from the Surrenders, dropping to five. Exactly. I mean, this is so tough here for Joel because even if he attacks for six, he's got no blockers left. He's on five. He would die. So that's not an option. Ay, 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 ay. I mean, this Juzam is really, really tough for Joel to deal with. Also, in combination, of course, with those two Pump Knights, he cannot just say, you know what, I'm going to attack with both my Flyers, keep my Factory as a blocker, whatever. Um, Ishan simply has too many creatures for that. You know, you need more blockers. You're on five, super low, but on the same time, you're taking three damage a turn. Yeah, it's really tough. Needs to find some kind of removal here. I don't believe there's any life gain in his deck. I can't really remember his sideboard, by the way. Perhaps this could be one of those decks where you could consider putting a Spirit Link or two in the sideboard. Spirit Link, of course, a great answer on the Juzam. And Joel really in the tank, knowing that, you know, this could be my one of my final turns here in game number one. He's on five. I wonder if Ishan, what if, what if Joel just passes? I wonder if Ishan's then going to go for an all-out attack. I guess you don't, right? You just want to let him bleed to death. Let's first see what Joel's going to do. He's going to tap three lands. Another Serendip! Oh, <laughs> very gutsy. I mean, he's got one more turn, right? That's the conclusion. He's got one last turn. That's it. He's not even attacking. Wow, this surprises me. I would think he would attack... Um, one of the things I can think about here is that Joel has a lot of burn in hand. 
Ishan should go to 14, by the way, I believe, taking a damage from the Juzam, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly, goes to 14. I mean, if you're Joel, you should be very, very worried because, I mean, if you're Ishan, because Joel played that surrender, didn't attack. So next turn, he's going to go on one, but one means he's got one final attack. He can hit you for nine through the air. If he then has some burn, he can win the game. You know, that's how simple it is. So this is really a nail biter for Ishan. He's like, okay, am I doing nothing? Passing the turn, let you go to one and hope that you don't have enough burn to, uh, to kill me. I mean, if you're Ishan, you just want to have like maybe, you know, a Sengir Vampire or a Terror just, just to get rid of one of those flyers if need be. This is super risky. And I think actually that Joel only needs to deal 13 points of damage because of that Juzam. So one of the lines that we could see next turn, although then it would probably be a draw, is he would attack with the three Surrender Perfreeds, deal nine. He would put Ishan on five. He would pass the turn. Any upkeep Ishan would take a damage from his own Juzam, drop to four. And then he plays a Sayani Blast, dealing the final four damage. And then both players uh, would die. Because you, you also take two damage uh, when you're casting your Psyonic Blast. And it happens at the same time. So four will go to Ishan, two to Joel. That means they're both dead. That could be a scenario. That would mean a draw in the first game. Yeah, Ishan really in the tank. Probably going through all the scenarios knowing that, yes, he is winning. But he has to give Joel one last turn. And that's a problem. Really, really in the tank. It looks like he's going to do something. Is he animating the fact? Tapping five. What does he have for five? There's a Sengir. Okay, that is something. That could be the one thing that Joel didn't, didn't count in, that he didn't hope for. Anyway, first taking four damage, dropping to one, I believe. Exactly one measly life. Just attack with all your flyers, Joel. Just, do, just, just for fun. Just Even if you die next turn, whatever, just attack just for fun. Do an Alpha Strike, why not? I mean, you're on one, who cares? I mean, the fact that he's thinking means that he sees a way out, right? Despite the Sengir. I mean, if, if we think here, you attack with your three Surrender Perfreeds, one of them gets blocked. You do six damage to Joel or to Ishan, I mean. Ishan is on eight. Uh, on eight. He takes the damage from his own Juzam, he would drop to seven. That means you need a Bolt and a Sayani Blast. Does he have a Bolt and a Sayani Blast? That's the big question. He's going to turn it sideways. There's the attack. Of course, Ishan's going to block one of the Flyers. That means six points of damage. What a great game one here, by the way. Ishan dropping to eight. What are we going to see? Does he have a Bolt and a Sayani Blast? If he does, he's probably first going to play the Bolt, pass the turn, in the upkeep, after he took the damage from the Juzam, he's going to play the uh, Psyonic Blast. Or is he going to do something else? There's the Psyonic Blast. Yeah, that means he's dead. And that means it's a uh, gamey for Ishan. So I guess Joel didn't have the Bolt, but he did have the Psyonic Blast. So without the Sengir, it would have been a draw. So uh, this, this game was very, 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 very close. And this, this promises a lot for a game two and maybe even a game three. Anyway, Ishan winning the first game here. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go with, of course, Joel on the play after losing the first one. Look at this, this is how he wants to start playing a vice. Unfortunately for him though, Ishan did take a mulligan. So he's got six in hand, only taking two points of damage. Dropping to 18, drawing card number 7 here. Let's see what he can do. I mean, Vice against Black, it's tough because, of course, they've got Dark Ritual, lots of quick quick creatures as well, and quick spells. But in this case, actually, Ishan just passing the turn, which is good news for Joel, meaning that at least he can deal two more damage with that Vice. There's the Savannah line. So, I mean, this is much more aggression from Joel, and his deck is looking a lot better on the play, by the way. So Savannah Lion now hit the board. Two more damage for Ishan, dropping to 16. It's really important for him now to actually play something out. He's going to tap two. What does he have for two? And he's got a Terror on the Lion. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good decision. You want to stop the bleeding. And of course, with the Terror, you're also kind of emptying your hand. 
going from six cards in hand to five cards in hand, that also helps. It does mean, of course, that Joel, Joel kind of has a free attack here with the factory if he wants to. Yeah, exactly. Going to put Ishan here on 14. And he's going to take a damage here from the vice. He's going to untap, upkeep, take a damage, go to 13. Of course, five cards in hand, draw card number seven. Sorry, number six. <laughs> Would be nice to draw two cards, you know. But uh, just one card, so six cards in hand, playing the Swamp, five cards in hand. I mean, he needs something here still. Could, of course, keep his factory up. Could then block with the factory if he attacks. Gonna tap one black here, it seems. There's a Dark Ritual. And oh, there's a Juzam. There's the 5-5 five, five powerhouse. That means uh, problems here for Joel. Let's see what he can do. He's gonna draw a card. I mean, that makes sense. Step one, draw a card. Step two, find a solution for the Juzam. He's got seven in hand, 20 life still, playing out a Mishra's Factory. I wonder if he still has seven in hand, by the way, but it says they're next to the life total. I'm not sure if it's accurate. Yeah, he's got less cards in hand. He's got four cards in hand. Makes sense, of course. Already played the Vice and the Lion, and he was on the play. Passing the turn, though, right? So no answer, it seems. Can, of course, double block with the factories, but then he's going to lose both factories. Exactly. I think you, right? I think you got to turn it sideways, Ishan. Yeah, that's what I would do. It, it's a Juzam. They want to attack. Let it attack. Let it be himself. I wonder if Joel maybe also has a bolt. Then he could animate the factory, block the Juzam, and then uh, also play a bolt, killing it. Of course, then it is a two for one. So it's still a pretty okay deal. If you're, if you're Ishan, but you really don't want to take uh, five damage here. So Joel being on 20, but still. Anyway, he's going to animate the Mishra's factory. And that's kind of nice that you know you're playing against Mono Black, so you don't have to worry about any instant removal here. Going to make it... Okay, so he's going to block, and then he's going to play the Psionic Blast on it. Meaning that they both will die. Also two damage here, though, for Joel. I mean... A bolt would have been much nicer, but yeah, if you don't have that uh, choice, then this is another way to do it. Unfortunately, you still take two damage yourself as well, but hey, you're, you're on 20, so second main here. There's another Order of the Ebon Hand. 12 life for Ishan, and that Order, three cards in hand, it seems, or perhaps less, perhaps two. Yeah, two cards in hand, passing the turn. Three cards in hand, four cards in hand now for Joel, 18 life. And I mean, the orders are so good because, again, right, that order, he can pump it, can make it a 3-1, and has a black mana to give it first strike. I mean, the order of the Evan Hand, when I was a little Timmy, I, I knew it was a good card, but I definitely underestimated it because I'm like, okay, when, when are you going to pay two black to give it plus one, plus O? Oh, who cares? That's way too costly, but it's actually not. It's a very well-designed card. Joel here, by the way, playing a Tundra, I believe. So he's got four lands now. What would be quite nice for him now is, is an Atok, right? Because he has that vice to feed it to, and then he can make it a 3-4, which would make it a really good blocker for the Order of the Evan Hand. Or just simply burn it away. That's another option. Okay, here's an Ang of Mishra. Interesting. So Ang of Mishra, an artifact that says whenever you play a land, take two damage. So uh, that's quite interesting. Passing the turn here back to Ishan. So Ishan, of course, not taking any damage uh, from the Vice. Three cards in hand now after the draw. I wonder if he's going to play out Lance. He's going to attack for sure, it seems. Yeah, exactly. Turning the order sideways. 2-1 attacking here. Are we going to see a block? That's the question. I don't think so, right? Because, of course, yeah, you can animate your, your own Mishra's Factory. You can pump itself. But remember, Ishan is enough mana to give it plus one, plus oh, and first strike. So then you're just going to lose your Mishra's Factory. I think you'd rather just take two, exactly, go to 16. And, and also kind of see, okay, Ishan, if you want to deal that extra point of damage, sure. But it's going to cost you two black, meaning you probably cannot play anything else out. So it looks like Ishan a little bit in the tank here, considering, do I want to pump it up, yes or no?
going through the motion. What's in his hand? Maybe a could have a dark ritual in hand, perhaps that he's considering. Oh, we're already in second main. Okay. It's going to take two damage, drop to 10. So he was in the tank thinking about, do I want to play out this land? Yes or no? There's a double tap, another order of the Ebon Hand. Passing the turn. And I mean, I talked in the deck deck extensively about Drain Life because I think Drain Life can be crucial in this matchup. We haven't seen Ishan cast a single Drain Life. I think that would make all the difference, right? If you have a well-timed Drain Life, take some life from Joel, gain some life. You know, it can really be a tipping point in a match. But I haven't seen it, and only one card in Ishan's hand. So Joel now has to decide, what is he going to do? Tapping the Tundra here. Oh, he's going to animate. So kind of signaling to have some burn here, I guess. Ooh, attacking here, 2-2, into the red zone. No, untapping again. Interesting. I think you would only do this if you have like a bolt or something in hand. And then I wonder, I mean, if you're Ishan, you kind of know that as well, right? If you see, okay, if he's animating and attacking with it, knowing what I have on board, he probably has a bolt. Are you then going to animate your factory, block it on your own factory or not? So I'm not quite sure if he's attacking or not. Um, so he's playing Soul Ring, okay. Not quite sure. Okay, he's playing a Falling Star. Wow, this Falling Star could be huge. He can kill both orders of the Evan Hand. This is explosive. Still not quite sure what he, what he wants to do with that factory. But okay, let's first look at the flip. This is a pretty big deal. There he goes. Oh, well done, Joel. Very good flip. This is a beautiful two for one for him. Really gets him back into it. Yeah, this is huge. This is really, really huge. These orders is really something that Ishan needed, and now he's in trouble top decking. Probably that one card is like a dark ritual or, you know, maybe another land. Probably not going to be all that useful at the moment for him. He's on 10. Yeah, this Falling Star was a huge moment for Joel. Really gets him back into the game. That means he can start attacking with the factory next turn. Well, of course, he can't actually get Ishan still as his own factory. So he needs to find a way to put some pressure on Ishan. I mean, if he swings in here and animates, it's really a clear signal that he's got some burn in hand and simply waiting for Ishan to animate his factory. Two cards in hand for him, passing the turn. Two cards in hand for Ishan. Now three after the draw. Again, a nail biter here in game number two. Three cards in hand for Ishan. 10 life, 16 life for Joel, and uh, two cards in hand for him. There's another swamp taking more damage. Oh man, the Ank is doing work. Gonna tap two. Oh, are we gonna see a drain life? There's a drain life. Okay, so this drain life for four. So that means he's gonna go back up to 12. And Joel's going to drop, I believe, to 12. But he's also, you know, maybe going to take a swing of 2 as well, drop to 10. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of a free swing here. It does mean, of course, that Ishan can also attack next turn unless Joel plays something out. Ideal scenario for Joel here would be if he's got a, a bolt in hand. Then again, I wonder if you're Ishan, do you want to attack here? Are you really the aggressor? Maybe you want to keep your factory on blocking duty. I mean, you're on the lower life total. Oh, another Drain Life? No, a Sengir Vampire. Wow, this Sengir really came at the right time. Great moment for Ishan. Yeah, I guess it's better to tap the factory, but doesn't matter that much. Yeah, this is a great moment for Ishan. This Sengir came right on time. Joel drawing a card here. He's on 12. Doesn't have any flyers, so that Sengir is a big problem for him. If he's got a Sionic Blast, that would be ideal. And now it's Joel's turn to, uh, to be in the tank. And I have to say, I really like the list of Ishan, by the way. He's not playing him to Turek in a mono black list 
and making it to the finals. He really chose to go heavy on creatures, which I like. You know, I mean, combat is a really interesting part of magic, and it's just great to see that in X points really coming alive. And just in general, I have to say, a lot of tournaments that I've visited lately had a lot of creature creature heavy decks, also creature heavy decks winning events, also in Swedish formats, also in Atlantic, also here at X Point. So it's just great to see. There's the animate of the factory, it seems. Ooh, that mean that means he's got a bolt. He's gonna attack for two. The question is, if you're Ishan, what are you gonna do? Yeah, just take the damage. He's gonna go to eight. It is risky though. Remember, Joel's deck, it's full of burn. And we haven't seen a lot of burn. He's got four psionic blasts, four lightning bolts, four chain lightnings. Three cards in hand, no, four cards in hand, even passing the turn. I mean, maybe Joel is just calculating. It's like, I'm on 12, I can take a hit of four. I'm on eight, fine. I wonder if he's also going to animate the factory here. I would be tempted to do that as well. I guess he's keeping that on blocking duty. I mean, you don't want to go to six, I guess, because that's a double bolt. There's the attack for four through the air. Yeah, look at that. He's going to take it. He's going to drop to eight. There's an hypnotic specter. So that hippie, you know, I mean, does it really change something you already had a blocker, of course, with the factory? I mean, I wonder if Joel is just going to start firing off direct damage. The Hippie could be a problem, though, because you don't want to discard the direct damage that you need to win this game. Both players on 8 at the moment. Let's see what Joel can, uh, Joel can do here. Tapping 2, there's an Atok. Okay, interesting creature. Problem, of course, it doesn't have flying. It looks like he wants to tap some other type of mana for it. Yeah, going to do it like this. Keep one floating. Now, remember, this is with mana burn. And, okay, playing another Vice. That Vice is great food for the Atog. Oh, man, this is tense. He's on eight, so next turn could drop to two. I mean, he only has one, one more turn. There's a Chain Lightning. Is he going to play the Chain on the Life Total or on the Hippie? Okay, going to go for the Hippie. I mean, okay, there's a terror on the ATOC on end step, I guess. Ooh, it's looking bad for Joel. Looking bad. There's the attack on a drop to four. Oh, it's almost dead. Oh, he's going to tap out. Does he have a drain life? If he has a drain life, he can win it here. Going to tap five. There's another sing here. Oh, that is tough. Another Sangir passing the turn. Come on, Joel. No, 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 no. That's it. That's it. That's it. Ay, 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 ay. Ishan winning here. And uh, congratulations, Ishan. You are the champion of the X Points number 37. I was kind of rooting for Joel in that uh, second game because I'm always hoping for a close three game match, but still man, your deck did it and you've built a beautiful deck. It's a beautiful deck. Like I said, no hint to Turek, still winning, going happy on creatures. Big fan of the Juzam, big fan of the Drain Life, especially in a format with so many direct damage decks. You know, there's so many Chain Lightnings, Lightning Bolt decks like, like Joel's and I think Drain Life can just, just be an MVP there, but um, yeah, you did absolutely great. The Sengir is also really uh, delivered, so congratulations. And if you've enjoyed this match, please take a moment uh, to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then, of course, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the information. And if you become a patron at the $2 tier level, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do?
Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.